welcome to The Rest is Football with me, Alan Shearer, Micah Richards and the stupid old fool, Gary Lineker, who hasn't got a clue how to turn his computer on. We've been sat here for 45 <laughs> minutes waiting for him. He's had his headphones on and off, turned his computer on and off for five or six times and eventually he's online. Welcome, Gary. <laughs> Thank you. I rely on young people like yourself, Alan, to 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 get me through this. Um, it was yeah, it's very frustrating. Um, I apologise for keeping you both waiting, but at least England won a game of football beforehand. It would have been even worse if England hadn't um, hadn't won. Um, but thank you for the introduction, Alan. You've, you you might have a, a future, a career in in this. Something like that. Game. Yeah. Well, at least I know I would turn a f-ing computer on. <laughs> So do I. It was the, it was a problem with the headphones. I mean, I'm a technophobe, and normally um, producer Harry's um, here alongside me, but um, he's on a golf trip, <laughs> and I was left to my own devices. And uh, devices is not a thing I'm very strong with. Well, try Gary. pressing the on button. That helps. Ah, <laughs> uh, on on a scale from one to ten. <laughs> 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 How much was he floundering there? Look at him sweating and everything. Look I was, at him. I was a cold sweat. <laughs> a cold sweat. Oh, oh dearie me. But anyway. Brilliant. But here we are, uh, off the back of um, a very impressive England performance, uh, I felt, particularly going uh, one down uh, against. Um, Obviously, Italy is one of the you know one of the great nations in world football. Although I have to say, I don't think this is um, <laughs> probably one of um, Italy's strongest ever lineups, um, to put it mildly. But um, England, are impressive again, particularly going forward. Yeah, um, we, we know what England can do. Um, I like the whole thing when we've talked before in the past about when Kane comes really deep. They've got to play with runners. But because Bellingham loves to run into space and you've got Rashford from the left-hand side, it actually re- it works really, really well. Like we, I'm sick of talking about Bellingham now because every time I'm not. I watch him play, he just delivers. Whether it's him... I don't know if you've seen before he got the assist uh, for Kane's penalty, the way he was egging on the crowd, basically say, come on, we, we need you. He's like the the adult on the pitch. He's so mature for his age and he just keeps on delivering. The way he just bursts into the space and changes the pace of the game. Uh, he's a sort of a different number 10. So when you think of a number 10, you think of a, a Phil Foden type on the half turn playing lovely passes, but he can do everything. He's sort of aggressive in the way he presses. Good passing, but also he reads the game very well. So I just think all around fantastic performance. I know you probably want to talk about Kane, you know, as strikers, but Bellingham caught the eye once again. No, I think Bellingham's probably the, the, a great starting place because I think England's, um, I mean, obviously Harry Kane's the captain. He's been brilliant at leading the team and stuff, but... Jude's he's he's a natural leader, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's not only blessed with incredible ability and remarkable maturity for for a man so young. I mean, he's he's still only what is he twenty? Um, he's bossing things at Real Madrid. Um, you can see him bossing things with England as well. Um, he's the sort of player that you can envisage um, leading England for an awfully long time. Alan, wouldn't you say? He will do. I, I've got no doubt about that. I think the way he conducts himself, the way he handles himself, the way the way he performs, the arrogance about him in a really great way, and I mean that in a respectful way, not in any other way, because he has already got this aura about him. Um, for someone so young... There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that one day he will be England captain and he could and should lead us on to great things. Huge admirer of him. Are are we talking about one of the the greatest ever midfielders England have (laughs) ever produced? Are, are, Are we talking that level from ability or...? I think... Because he's so young and there's so many things that can still influence uh, him going forward, then 
I would be reluctant to say that yet, Micah, but with potential, with attitude, with all of those things, then... I mean, he's he's already a superstar. That I don't think he can doubt that. But I think in terms of longevity, then you have to look at uh, things that can and could go wrong. Um, but I don't know. With his, I, I love his attitude. I love his ability. I love who and what he is. Um, and you can't not but be anything than a fan of his already. And be be really excited what the next 10 to 12 years can hold for him and England. What I would say on this, and it's it's you always slightly reluctant, aren't you, to, to predict a, a wonderful future for a young footballer because you don't want to A, be the, the, the kiss of death, but, but also to get ahead of yourself. Yeah. But what I would say is that if he wasn't English, we wouldn't worry about saying those things. We'd be going, look at this German, look at this young Spanish player. What an unbelievable footballer he is. Um, and I suppose because he's English and we haven't really had that many true greats in the world of football. We've never had a superstar in the sense of, I don't think so anyway, in the sense of a of a Maradona and Messi. I'm not going to compare him with those two, but that those aside, some, you know, like a, a Cruyff or a Zidane or, you know, one of those kind of Platinese, great players uh, from the past. Um, we've never really had one in England, but I, I, I suppose probably, you know, Bobby Charlton would, would be close, Wayne Rooney to a degree. But in terms of being a genuine world superstar, we've never had one. So I think we're slightly reluctant to, to get ahead of ourselves and, and, and overpraise him because sometimes when you do those things, you end up being disappointed. But if he was playing for another country, I think we'd all be going, oh my God, have you seen this 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 player that Spain has got? I just, I just yeah. think he loves, he absolutely loves the environment that we're all putting him in or he's putting himself in. Um, not that we're putting him in. He's, I mean, he, he he's the one that's producing it every single week. And he's the one that is like really, really enjoying what he's doing and the response that he's getting for it. So why sh why shouldn't we talk in, in the way we do about him? Because yes, he's young, but absolute superstar. Are we are we confident now <clears throat> with with qualification going into next summer? Do do we believe that we could, because I, I, I don't want to be negative. I don't, I, 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 just the certain parts of our game, I think for us to really go and win it, everyone's got to be fully fit and everyone, we've got to have that, that confidence within the camp. There's still little bits where this wasn't the greatest Italian side that we've seen and they could have scored two or three in that first half just on that counter attack. But that happens. But I just think, for us to go and win this tournament, we, we just need to. No team's perfect, though. Yeah, I would say. Of course, yes, of course. That. I mean, of every, course, yeah. every single team, has, uh, with the very, very odd exception in the history of our sport, has had frailties, has had weaknesses, and obviously, you look at perhaps the back for England in the in the centre of defence. But I, I also, I was, I mean, John Stones is an exceptional footballer. Um, I mean, Harry Maguire's never let his country down. And I was, I thought Mark Gay when he came on was 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 really impressive and authoritative. So, and then you you, you know the players. So you, you know you're always going to have a I think a segment in your side that is not as strong as as the rest of it. But I think the important thing is is that England play to their strengths like they certainly did uh, this evening. But what are, what are our strengths? I think when I'm looking at it. And I'm asking you, Gary. I'd I like to hear from you as well, Gary, because obviously we know you're a presenter and whatnot, but you've got so not much here, knowledge of... <laughs> you've got when so he much turns up, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> I was here. <laughs> you've got so much knowledge of, of the game. And we're looking at, have we got too much options? So when... No, no, it, no. You, you don't, you don't you think we have. You can't have too many options. You need options because you know what it's like in tournament football when you get there. You know, you can go with a mindset. You've got an unbelievable 11 players, but some will, 
lose their form at a certain time during a tournament. Um, others, uh, there might be an injury or two. You need depth in that squad and England certainly have depth in that squad in most positions. And I think that's vitally important. I've been saying for some time now that if England keep knocking on the door like they've done in the last three tournaments with this generation of players, I think our time will come. It may be next summer. It may be in two years' time. It may be in four years' time when the Euros is in England. And and they, obviously they were very close when in in the Euros um, in the final when they lost to Italy. When it would be interesting, wouldn't it, if England had gone behind in that final, whether like they did tonight, whether that would have uh, made any sort of difference. Um, it's, we'll, we'll never know the answer to that question, but. You know, it's very, very difficult to win a major tournament. Um, Alan's played in them. I've played in them. Um, you know, there are a lot of good countries in the world and and, and they're all, you know, they've, we've not managed to win a tournament for an awfully long time. So, you don't, you know, what people always say, oh, here we go, England are going to win it now because they've got to get in. The, the, the critics will always jump in. But I think there's a reason for optimism and I think that's optimism has come because... We've been close in three tournaments now, relatively close. In, in you know, if we'd have beaten France, it was a very close game. It could have gone either way. But you need things to go for you in a tournament, and that I think, if you keep knocking on the door, if you've got enough good players, eventually you will get that little bit of luck at the right time that will make a difference. I might, of course, be wrong, but we will be one of the competitive nations in the next few tournaments without a shadow of a doubt. Whether we win one or not, who knows? But if you are if you keep getting there to the final stages, eventually, I hope, something positive will happen. I think tonight was a great example of who and what we are. We can and will be devastating from midfield onwards. We will compete with the very best. We are... In, we are or should be spoken about with the very best going forward in world football. And I think tonight was a great example of that. Whoever we pick, whether it's Foden, whether it's Grealish, whether it's Rashford, whether it's Kane, whether it's Bellingham, whether, it, whether it's Rice, whether it, from the midfield onwards, I think we are as good as it gets. In, not in European football, in world football. But the, the, the one question that will remain, and, that's, and that, that's why I say it will, it was like what happened this evening in terms of defensively. It's always going to be asked of us, I think, because, yeah, there are question marks in, in that area. And I think that's what happened tonight. That's who and what we are tonight. Yeah, you you also could have mentioned obviously Saka and, and Madison Absolutely, as, yeah. as well. And yeah. there are probably one or two more. Um, but I always feel in, in football, I've always felt it's easier to sort out the back than it is to sort out going forward. And I think you're better off being a position where you're unbelievably strong in the attacking sense of the game and and your frailties are defensively yeah. rather than the other way around. Because you, you it's not very easy to coach being brilliant going forward. It's much more easy to coach defensive shape and formation. Yeah, but I would I would also say I thought, mm, I mean, without being disrespectful, I thought Italy were really poor tonight. I, I don't think they're a great team. I don't think they're a great country at this moment in time. Um, I don't think they've got great players, uh, particularly in forward positions. And I think that's short tonight. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that. So are we going to pick our eleven? If if the Euros are starting, it's too early. If, for if the Euros are starting tomorrow, <laughs> everybody was fit. Because if not, we always sort of try to get around this, don't we? A little bit. If we're going to pick at eleven, three of us right now, are we going to agree on? Are we going to agree on a team? No one will ever team? agree on the team, and also it, it will be vastly different come next summer than it is now. And you know, players will. You know, dip in form. Some players will find form. Um, some players, you know, you will be injured. You'll be missing some. Um, I think it's a kind of futile thing. I think the, at the moment, it's very much a squad game nowadays as well, isn't it? And particularly in a tournament, we saw that, didn't we, in the, in the World Cup? Even even with even with England, that you know, the 
everyone was going, oh, why is he not playing? Why he's not playing? Then, you know, Foden was out a couple of games, then Foden was in. And then, you know, why is Rashford not playing? Rashford comes in and does. There's going to be so many changes. The team that ends a tournament is very, very rarely anywhere near the team that starts a tournament. And I those, I think the one thing I'll say about Gareth Southgate, and you can agree or you can disagree with his selections, but I love the way that Gareth never lets the noise affect him. He doesn't let, you know, whether it's journalists, whether it's people like ourselves doing a podcast or whether we're working on television and we have our opinions, he doesn't let that influence. He does what he thinks is the right way forward for his team. And I admire that. And I'll tell you, he was like that. Bobby Robson was very much like that. He'd never listened to the noise. You know, he knew the players he could trust in particular. Um, and he, he just got on with it and he didn't let the outside world influence him. And I think that's a very important thing. Well, whatever you say about him, um, and most of it has to be really positive, he has created a really, really good atmosphere in that England squad. Um, and they're all for they're all for each other. They're all back each other. It seems a really good atmosphere, which isn't always the case in the England team, as we know. Um, they've re they've gone really close, and I mean he he deserves all of our backing. He deserves all of our I don't know respect because of what's happened in the past, from where they were when he took over. So yeah. Um, They've they've they they've got a really good chance, and I'll I'll I, I mean I like his attitude. I love his attitude. He doesn't give a shit about what anyone thinks. On from the outside, he's going to do it his way. If he succeeds, it's his way. If he fails, it's his way. And I think that's without doubt the right way to be. Well, was you mates with Gareth in in ninety six? Yeah, Gareth didn't like him though. <laughs> <laughs> What what sort of person was he back then, Al? Um, he was single-minded. He was a very good player. He had be belief in his own ability. He might not have been first choice at all times, but that didn't affect him. And I think his, I think his attitude got him through maybe more than his ability. Hope I'm not being too disrespectful then, but, and I think that's without doubt. Sean now as, as, as a manager. I would agree. Um, Alan, do you want to, to take us into the break? It's, it's one all at half time. Do you want that <laughs> option or do you want me to do it? Yeah, absolutely. And um, now is the great time to take a break and um, we'll see you after the break. Beautifully done. <laughs> <laughs> And welcome back to The Rest is Football with me, Alan Shearer and Micah Richards and the very, very late Gary Lineker who hasn't got a clue how I'm to turn I'm not dead? What do you mean on. the late Gary Lineker? <laughs> not dead yet. I'm getting closer. <laughs> Obviously, I <laughs> am. <laughs> and can I say one thing? I mean, I, you'll see this and we'll put pictures out at some point, but are you in an old people's home? <laughs> no, I'm, um, I'm in a, in a, in a golf. Because those curtains, they look... <laughs> I'm in a golf club that um, ah. has that had great weather, and we've been me and Mike have been sat here for an hour and a half waiting for you. So yeah, yeah, well, yeah. you're in a golf club. Yeah, I'm in a golf club. Yeah, it's 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 ten thirty at night. I know. I've been sat here for an hour and a half waiting for you. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Anyway, we were we were talking about um, England's uh, performance um, this evening. What else stood out for you, Micah? What stood out for you? Apart from obviously we mentioned Bellingham and, um, and we'll come on to Harry Kane in a moment, but I thought Phil Foden did really well. And I thought Mar Marcus Rashford, after a tough start to the game, he also blossomed and, and what a goal that was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was amazing. I think that's the good thing about Rashford. And he's been mediocre by his standards this season. He always looks like it's going to happen for him. It's not really happened for him at Man United so far. And in the game, it looked like he was going to have another one of those performances where things were not going his way. But he can just come alive. We talked about Bellingham for the first uh, Kane penalty. And then the second one, he just bursts through. You think, is he going to get there? He's got the speed to get there. And then he just 
releases the ball at the right time. And then not only that, he makes a run, which makes up the decision for Rashford to come inside and then finish. But it wasn't only Rashford who I thought did well in that period. I thought Undoggy or Undoji, the, the Spurs left back, before he got his yellow card, I thought it was outstanding. He was their threat down that left-hand side. Um, Looks I a great signing only, for Tottenham, doesn't he? Is he 20, 21, Ita yeah. Italian? Like, he, they got him, what, a couple of seasons ago and sent him on loan and now he's back. He's He was, until he got his yellow card, probably the, the best player for on Italy, the pitch. Um, yeah. Mikey, what I mean, about Trippier, left-back? <laughs> You you know Trippier. I, I've always got positive things to say about Trippier. I, I do think sometimes it is a little bit of a waste. He's got some so good of a right foot down that right hand side. The way you open up the play and you're trying yeah. to sort of play out from the back and start attacks, he's the way he opens up, he's coming onto his right foot, and the only real pass. He's got the diag or just back to the, the center house where we know how good he is going forward, yeah. but because Kyle Walker's playing so well. And then a little bit, he wasn't getting really the help from from Rashford and on the goal, there was an overlap. It's a good it's a bonus though for Gareth, isn't it, that he can play both sides. It's like unbelievable. You've got two two of the best players in the Premier League this season and last season, um, that are probably automatics and have to be for England. I mean, Walker is what he is. He's what he brings to the England team. But in terms of Trippier, I, I watch him most weekends and he's having an unbelievable season. So, yeah, it's yeah two of the informed players of this season, left back and right back. And don't forget on the bench, you've got a certain Trent Alexander-Arnold. I know, yeah, yeah. A bad yeah, little footballer. Yeah. <laughs> and not just Trent, we've got Reese James to yeah, come back come from back, injury. Yeah. When you talk about quality. Luke Shaw's out, obviously, um, left back. Uh, yeah. right. So, you know, it's it's just that central defensive area, isn't it? I but, think you know, so, yeah. with, with the emergence of well, we're looking for possibly well, Colwell We're as well. looking for perfection as well, aren't we? Well, we, I think every country does. I think that's yeah. what you do because, you you know, you... It, you you care so much, don't you, about your national side? And I think that's the case. We cannot um, um, complete this podcast, that's for sure, without talking about Harry Kane. Two more goals. <laughs> um, another penalty. It was all over social media. I don't know whether you saw, but he's... And they, well, they mentioned it in commentary. Um, Steve Bauer mentioned the fact that 21 penalties... I, did, I had no idea it was that many. He scored, that is. He's 25, he's taken. Mm. It's a pretty good record, 21 out of 25. But it's an extraordinary amount. What's his percentage record like? like? Who's what In terms of the list, who's he, oh, who's, who's he behind or above? I think he's um, 21 out of 25. Um, and then you and me, we both missed just the one, I think. You took more penalties than me, so you know. I obviously I scored a few way more, more in the real shootouts. goals. Shootouts I scored way well, more real which goals. don't count, Gary, as you know. <laughs> and they don't count. Yes, exactly. But um, but but his second goal was brilliant. Oh, that was wasn't brilliant. It? He's, yeah, what I mean, a finish. You know he's going to score. There are certain players, aren't they? Certain strikers that when they go one on one with a goalkeeper, you go, he'll score. And there are others you go, mm, he won't. <laughs> Just I yeah. mean he's. I don't know what, the, what other words we can say about him other than, yeah, top quality. He is what he is. He just delivers all the time. And when he went through, there was never any part of me that thought, mm, not sure about this. I just knew it was going to end up in the back of the net. And yeah. I don't know, that's the biggest compliment we can pay him, isn't it? Is that he's, he, he's top quality and we've been saying it for years. I'm not looking for headlines here and to score that amount of goals for your country. But with the the quality of the opposition now, how many goals did, do you guys think you could score given the amount of games and the quality of the games that Kane has played? You have to remember tonight was Italy, you know, and they're notoriously a difficult team to score against. But um, I, I know what you're saying because World Cup and European Championship qualification games now, you know, you're going to get two or three at least um, teams in the group that are, are pretty much below par in terms of international. Um, when I played, perhaps the, 
Now I'm trying to think back to qualifying games. The probably the easiest game back then would, and we did well against, was probably Turkey, and that's a proper football country. Um, because what we've seen, obviously, since then is the breakup of the old Soviet Union into many, many different countries. We've seen um, the Balkan um, countries after after the war in Yugoslavia is now four or five different countries. They've allowed in, obviously, team countries like um, Montenegro, and San Marino, yes. um, Gibraltar, and, and lots of you know countries that are basically going to be whipping boys um, when England play against them. So yeah, that's changed. But but having said all that, his record is fabulous. Um, it's brilliant, and and it's not his fault. It's not his fault. Um, and yeah, yeah. So yeah. Things change in the game, but that's why we're seeing now that all pretty much all the countries in Europe, their goal scoring records are being beaten. Olivier Giroud has beaten um, Thierry Henry recently. He's gone past him. Um, obviously, um, well, Cristiano's miles ahead. We don't need to count him uh, or Lewandowski, but Harry Kane's beat our record. And I think we'll see more of that because there are kind of more fixtures as there are more European countries. I don't think the same thing probably applies to South America because their qualification is pretty much the same teams. Well, it is the same teams that as always, they've always been against. But yeah, people will score more goals now. There's no doubt about it. Yep, I agree with that. Can't disagree. Well, that's a first, Alan. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, As much as I'd love to, yeah, can't. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it changed just after I finished. Otherwise, you wouldn't have scored all of those. <laughs> what, how much did you get? Thir- 30, wasn't it, England goals? 30, yeah, 30, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, all right. It's all right. 48 for bad. you? Yeah, 48. Should yeah. have been 49 other than that stupid penalty you dinged. <laughs> well, you missed one too, didn't you? Uh, uh, yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, it's on the list of got here. Well, it's, it's getting late on... Um, on a, a Tuesday night, and um, Alan's in his um, his care home, so we better let. <laughs> let at least I know it's only computer on. Yeah, are you are you going to say farewell for us on on our behalf? I will absolutely. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, Sorry, before you go, go on, before awesome. you go, we've we've got to say congratulations to Scotland also. Yes, for well qualifying. Said, John John McGinn, my mate, it's a very he's good been point. absolutely outstanding. Scott McTominay has been in the form of his life. They won the first five games in qualifying, and I just think it's a it's a great story. And they were also a little bit unlucky against Spain, weren't they? With that, the did you the, the VAR goal that was disallowed? I mean, it's one of those that you kind of see why they did, but it was very very marginal, wasn't it? It was marginal. McTominay yeah. as well again, yeah, wasn't exactly, it? Exactly. Yeah, with yeah, the free he's, kick, he's on absolute. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. Um, good for Steve Clark, who we've spoken yeah. about before as well. My old interim manager at Aston Villa. I'm delighted for for all of them. They've really put in the work and they just seem like a great group. So yeah. congratulations to them. And the, and the great thing is, I know we're all, the three of us are all English um, and, and have played for the national team, but certainly in terms of broadcasting, when you go to a major championship, it, it's great to have, you know, the other, you know, home nations teams, that are there because it adds a little bit of spark outside of of, of yeah. England as well. Because we, in the last tournament, didn't we, we have Wales and Scotland as as well, and it's it it, it really makes a difference. Um, and that's speaking personally for for us. Um, obviously, it's massively important for for the likes of Scotland and um, and if Wales can make it, I mean, they had a great result the other day. It, it makes it great for not only for us, Gary, but also mm. for the players as well. Because if there is a chance that you can play against Scotland or whoever it is, then those games are a lot better and, and a lot more fun and enjoyable because that's what we all want as players and fans. Don't you just think, though, as a broadcaster, lastly, before we go, I know you all want to go now and rest <laughs> up, but the Scottish accent for broadcasting is just fantastic. Someone like Graham Souness or Ali, McC- Ali McCoy. It's yeah. just like poetry in motion, isn't it? Okay, now, what you been drinking? <laughs> uh, it's not Micah Richards, it's Muck Richards. <laughs> well, that, is, that brings us to an end on here. The rest is football from me, Alan Shearer, Micah Richards and Gary Lineker. We, and we also 
Got to say thanks for all your kind comments. We love all the positive comments. Keep them coming. And um, we apologise for Gary being late this evening. It wasn't his fault. He just hasn't got a clue how to turn a computer on. I, and it's a um, goodbye from me. And he said goodbye from me. And a goodbye from me. 